All right, we begin today's program speaking of Donald Trump with someone who's been very critical about his potential candidacy. Chris Chocola, who's the president of the Club for Growth, uh, just yesterday uh, issued a blistering statement about, uh, about Donald Trump. And I want to start there because we've heard a number of social conservatives say, look, we understand that, that, uh, that Donald Trump has flip-flopped on issues like abortion, uh, like gay marriage, and that's okay. We're okay. We're happy to see him change his stripes. You don't seem uh, open to that from your perspective. Why is that? And why are you saying now that, uh, Donald, that Donald Trump Trump is a fiscal liberal. Well, if Donald Trump is serious about running for president, I think we need to get serious about examining his policy positions. He's a great showman, but I think we got to push back the curtain and look and see what's behind it. And if you look, he's not pro-growth, he's not conservative, he's uh, supported things like a wealth tax of 14 and a quarter percent. You know, capital is the engine that drives economic growth. And if you really want to see capital and capitalists flee this country, just uh, impose a wealth tax like that. Um, he thinks we should have a single-payer health care system. Uh, he's a rabid protectionist, wants to start a trade war with China. And so all those things, I think, should give us great concern. And we just think that if you want to uh, engage in a candidacy, you have to engage in the debate of policy and ideas. And we think educated voters are good voters. And so before we get further into this show, we just think people ought to understand what's behind the curtain. All right. Well. Let's then look at some of the other candidates, though, that are out there. How many other candidates are going to pull the curtain back on? Is there anybody else that you think you're going to say, look, this candidate says that they're doing this, but we're going to tell you really what's going on here? We do it with all the candidates. We uh, have a history of producing white papers that are an objective analysis of the economic history and policies of every candidate. And so as they become more uh, engaged in the race, we will release those papers. We did it in 2008. We'll do it again this time. Uh, but, you know, Trump is uh, clearly on TV all day, every day. There's a media infatuation with him. If anybody believes their own press, it's probably Donald Trump, and he gets a lot of it. And so we're becoming, you know, increasingly of the mind that he is going to run, and we think that people just ought to know more about him and his policy positions. Uh, before, um, you know, before they start to make commitments and they start to make up their minds on who they want to support. Now, George Stephanopoulos sat down with Mr. Trump yesterday and asked him specifically about your critique of his record on some fiscal issues. Take a look at some of what he had to say. The, the head of the Club for Growth says that your uh, call for tariffs on China will collapse the economy. I don't know anything about the Club for Growth, but I can tell you if that's his attitude, then he's not a very smart man. Not a, not a very smart man, specifically on this China issue. What is your concern about what he's saying? You said it would be essentially starting a trade war with China. What's your concern? A lot of folks are not happy with the way uh, our relationship with China has been. Well, if you want to impose a 25 percent tariff on imported Chinese goods, you're going to have a 25 percent tax on the American people and raise the cost of the things they buy. You know, there's few settled doctrine in economics, but one of them is free trade is a net benefit. It creates economic value, economic growth, jobs, it increases the standard of living. You can ask people like Robert Reich on the left, Art Laffer on the right, and there's few things they agree upon, but they agree upon that. So, you know, I think it's, uh, it's a foregone conclusion that free trade is a good thing, that the America has benefited from it in trying to create a trade war right now with the delicate economic situation we have right now is the worst thing you could do. It would devastate our economy, it would hurt American consumers, and we would all be worse off. So Donald Trump says that you're, you're not a very smart man. What's your take on him as an economist? Uh, you know, we're trying to get beyond the personalities and we're trying to get to the policy. At the Club for Growth, all we care about is trying to find people that are champions of economic freedom, people that have core beliefs, that understand how you create jobs, economic growth, and wealth. And we uh, think that people ought to understand that Donald Trump, he can be a candidate. We're not fearful of his candidacy at all, but he's not conservative, he's not pro-growth and he is not a good choice for economic conservatives. Very quickly, I want to go back to Indiana for a second uh, and, and ask you, uh, yeah, you a question about the Club for Growth's involvement potentially in a Senate race there. Dick Luger getting a challenge from his right. Do you intend to be involved in this primary supporting his challenger? Well, we're looking at that race very closely. Uh, we do have some concerns about Senator Luger and his service. Uh, we think it would be probably best if he would uh, he would retire at this point. So we haven't made any decisions at this point, but we are looking at it very closely, and it's one of the races that is very high on our radar. Uh, and, and any other big races you're going to get involved in Maine, for instance? How about Utah, another, another one that a lot of folks have been talking about? 
Well, you know, at the Club for Growth, like I said, we look for champions of economic freedom. We look at people that stand up for uh, and vote a pro-growth agenda. And we look at the history, um, not what candidates or incumbents are saying today, but really what their long-term history has been. So those are two uh, areas. Cer certainly Utah is a state, it's a very conservative state. They certainly will send right. a champion of economic freedom to the Senate. And so we're looking at that race. Uh, both of those are on our radar as well. All right, Chris Chicola of the Club for Growth, thanks for being here, really appreciate it. Thank uh, you.